It's not the forum. Hi there, welcome to the forum this week. We are on location for the first time ever. We're not on a toilet this time, we're in London. We're at the South Bank Centre for Venues Day 2014 as part of the Music Venue Trust. Um, today we've had a massive conference with over 100 different venues and 350 different people from the music industry uh, discussing issues that affect independent venues, um, licensing issues, uh, noise abatement issues, which we've spoken about before, and various other things. So it's been great to be here, we've had a great day. Uh, the night has drawn in, um, but we've had plenty of things to talk about. Uh, here's a little quick snippet with Mark David, the CEO of Music Venue Trust. Yeah, I think it was really. I mean, you know, you always take a punt on things. That's what you should be doing. We wanted to try and get 80 venues to come. We would have been happy with maybe 120 delegates, 80 venues. We've got 127, I think, venues and 300 delegates. So. There's obviously a call for it and a need for it. It's just a question of what to do next, really. There are two definite policy things that can happen and could happen as a result of today, which would make a massive difference straight away. If we got either of those, this would be a game-changing event, and that's what we wanted to do. We actually set up the Music Venue Trust with a very clear idea of a specific policy thing that we want to do. Um, this isn't actually it, but I can see that this sits alongside it, and so if there is a collective call to do that, yeah, we probably would be interested in doing it. But we're equally in, you know, in favour of people deciding to do this in another way, and us continue on doing what we're doing. You know, there's, there's both options work great. We need, we need to think about it as much as other people need to think about it, you know? That's the number one question, Matt. It's the big question, and the answer is we've got to make something happen. Uh, you know, my own theory is that people flock to success. You know, once this started to take off and you got all these people here, then everybody wants to be there and everybody wants to come. If we can get a big policy initiative out of this, everybody will want to be involved in the policy initiatives and they'll see the power of working together. So that's the way that it will game change things. You know, that, you've got to show the it means something and it's going to do something. Uh, we are firmly in December and it's not going to slow down towards the end of the year. We've got so many things coming up for you this month. And also next year, as you've probably heard, returning Homecoming King Slaves will be here in February. Uh, they announced it and sold out in less than 48 hours. So that means if you haven't bought your ticket already, you're not going to be there. How many times do I have to tell you? And then shortly after that, well yesterday in fact, Lower than Atlantis. They're going to be here. Yes, indeed they are. Yeah, they're going to be here on a Sunday the 15th of February, so make sure you snap up your tickets if they haven't already sold out, because this is going down on the Wednesday, and we filmed it on the Tuesday, and it could be that it's already gone, so, you know, don't take my word for it, but they're definitely going to be here. Anyway, talking of uh, homecoming kings, um, the Standard Lamps, they've been out on tour with The Who very recently, uh, and they came by in between their two stints to come and talk to me by the bar. Let's check it out. So we are here with the Standard Lamps and their triumphant return to the forum after their shows with The Who. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Very good. good yeah. Are you tired yet? Yes, a little bit. Has it been a little bit sketch over the last couple of days? You've been all over the place. Just tell us a little bit about what you've been doing on the road. I hear you went to Glasgow and Leeds with The Who. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Certainly. Uh, yeah, on Sunday we did Glasgow. That was good. St Andrew's Day as well. And they digged Amazing. it. They were... They were a great audience crowd. they were loving it and then we did Leeds last night which was what Tuesday night that was good as well yeah that went really well I remember you saying uh, just before we came on that uh, Live at Leeds is one of the records that you listened to very early on yes and um, that influenced you how was it to actually do that with The Who how was that for you very strange the first time I think I bought I bought Live at Leeds from Criminal Records do you remember Criminal Records <laughs> yes I do yeah yeah Oh, the phone's on. Uh, I bought that for about four quid in the, the vinyl uh, bargain bucket. Bought that, took it home. Uh, so I happened to invite Jimmy round for a little go on Colin McRae. And we were listening to that and controller was dropped. I just went, that's how you do it, Jim. You know, forget Jimi Hendrix. All you've got to do is hit the crap out of the guitar. And, you know, that was it really. And I've never looked back. 
obviously. So you've gone from there to being where you are now, and you've you've brought these guys with you. How has it for you? How's the experience been for you guys? It's been uh, it's been scary at times, but it's it's just been you know we'd never imagined we'd do anything like this. You know, it's just. Uh, it's been a completely different level, but um, it's just been it's been very exciting as well. You know, just what an opportunity, really. Incredible, yeah. I mean, watching someone like the Who kind of doing their sound check, you know, I mean, the whole thing is like, tailored for power. It's, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's cool. It's great. So, um, does it give you an inspiration to see that those guys are still rocking at their age, that you guys could really have some longevity in this? I mean, you know, bands like the Salem and the Rolling Stones, perhaps not so much because they don't tour as often, but they're still going strong to a degree where they are now. It's an inspiration for you guys to think, actually, there's quite a lot in this for me, and you're still in your early stages. Well, Roger's like 70 years old, isn't he? And he's, uh, you know, he, can, he can scream, he can still scream. Yeah, he's got some good lungs on him. And they're still going for it. And he's, you know, super fit, and it's just, they're just, they're just, they're just a machine, aren't they? So um, yeah, we can only hope that we'll be, uh, we'll be the same at that, at that stage in our, in our uh, musical journey. Yeah, how how they managed to do it, I'm not quite sure, because they did two and a half hours each night, and it's just, I don't know, I don't know how he managed just to keep singing like that, really. Oh, see. Did you guys, do you want a drink? Yeah, can I? I got tits. Got tits. Kevin R. White's. Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah, can I get uh, yeah, three, three R whites? I think so. Yeah, three R whites and a yeah. Diet Pepsi, please. That's their product placement. Uh, other beverages are available. Um, so yeah, obviously, so that's big for you guys. You've got two more dates coming up on that tour. Um, you're going to you did tell me Birmingham and Nottingham. Nottingham on Friday, but mm. um, <laughs> not in a. <laughs> could I have that in a sorry, it's tall a glass? Sorry. sorry. You can have it in a short cup. I think. All right, okay, all right. That's the way I like it. Uh, Nottingham on Friday, uh, Birmingham on Sunday, and it's back to the huge. Back to well, back back to the forum. In fact. Well, yeah, I was I was more talking about work, but then we've got the forum <laughs> as well, which is perfect. It's a good way to round the whole thing off. I mean. There's obviously uh, there's a, a, a difference between playing those shows. Also, coming back to the forum, something perhaps that you guys are more familiar with. But you know, a show is a show. I kind of feel like when you guys play here, um, you have a strong local support from people of all ages. Um, so, who's going to be on the bill for that show? Uh, we're starting it off with Anton Fee, who are kind of a long-time favourite of ours. I, I don't know. It's just I really, I really love what they do. And as a duo, I think they're probably the best duo around this part that I've seen I really dig them and their new stuff's ace as well um, and then we've got Dull Knife who are I think this will be their first it's probably oh so very much Chin Chin thanks Lutz yeah. <laughs> and you've also got uh, Dull, Dull Knife on the show as well Dull Knife it's their first I think it's their first time in Tunbridge Wells although it, they are local lads and they're the rhythm section in the Pretty Things yes. and they're absolutely brilliant in the Pretty Things and the two songs that we've heard um, just blew us away completely. They sound great, don't they? And I think they're going to be absolutely fab. So come down and see them because it was the first time you're going to see them here. And I think that once people see them, they're going to want to see them again. Yeah. Well, I really think that, um, as I say, when you guys come down here, I think the whole, you know, Taylor for Power. <laughs> thing, like you were saying, it really is a case of being very strong the vibes you have there's a lot of groove in what you guys do and that's obviously influenced from the things that you listen to you cited the who as one of your influences early on what about you guys what what sort of drew you into music sort of around that as well as that well i guess like listening to Entwistle was shaped how i play as a bass player now and, and uh, uh the other, my other kind of big influences um andy fraser from free mm. so like just all, all that kind of that plan he does is just it's just so like cool and uh, you know, doing what playing in a band like this and is is uh, enables me to do, do that kind of that kind of music so it's it's wicked. Um, Have you seen his recent stuff? Well, yes, he's gone a bit weird, isn't he? He's gone a bit weird these days. <laughs> he was that happens to us all. Seventies Fraser. Seventies, early seventies Fraser. Seventy-six, good, but <laughs> very peculiar beard he's got now. Very thin. It's very strange. Yeah. Mm. See, you've got me thinking about it now. I'm sort of getting Yours is cool, man. Yours is wicked. I had it trimmed for the first time the other day. And it's a shocking experience. I don't trust anybody with this. It was looking very scary. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to start becoming wispy and starting playing bass in weird places. Um, how about yourself? 
Um, well, I've got tons of influence over me. It's just, uh, it's just really about tailoring everything I do to you know, it's just, yeah, all the, all the songs that, that these guys are like, it's just making sure that everything's tailored with power, yeah. <laughs> Even the way that the songs are written, I mean, you know, if you had a song in G, it would yes. be a bit jangly, but you put it in A, it tailored for power. It just really yeah, cuts yeah. through. Yeah, it does. Power. It almost feels like you guys are tailors and power is your trade. That's Absolutely. So that was accurate. Yeah. yeah? That is the That's aim. Entirely accurate. Yeah. Brilliant. How do you guys feel stepping out in front of them and that many people? I mean, it's here you get a chance to lock on people's eyes, but I guess there is just a little sea of. It's exciting, really exciting. To be honest with you, it wasn't too bad at Glasgow. That was the first time, and obviously we walked in and we saw the venue, and you can kind of work it out. But on that kind of stage, you can pretty, when you're waiting to go on, you can see who's in the audience. So it's not like you're stepping out through a, a stage door and you you don't know what is out there. Um, you knew exactly what was out there when you know you could just see it. And plus, it kind of puts you it it actually puts you at rest a little bit when you see there are a few kind of empty seats because you start off with that and by the time you finish they're all full um, so yeah I mean it was great it was great you just to be honest with you mate you, you like didn't even think about it when we're on stage as well oh yeah alright yeah. uh, could I have a new bag are <laughs> you giving him half a bag of nuts no can we get a new... Uh, can I have a minute glass, glass, please? Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah, yeah, glass of peanuts. Yeah. And a straw, please. <laughs> so, uh, you guys can say, come back, uh, that's uh, next Friday on the 12th. Um, oh, there you go, there are your peanuts. So, don't mix those two together, that's no. an interesting combination. No. <laughs> um, so you've got your supports in there as well, uh, it should be a banging mm. show. Um, we can't wait to have you back here. We're grateful that we can get you between your two... Big sets of dates for the Who, and uh, who knows? Who knows? There it is. Boom. Who knows there what's next is. for you guys? Um, but we're very grateful to have you sit down today, and uh, yeah, wish you all the best. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. So, a uh, great chat to the boys. Um, they did two more shows after we filmed that interview, and they're going to be back here for you on Friday the 12th. Uh, support comes from Dull Knife and Anton Fee, as uh, we mentioned there, so it's going to be an amazing night. Make sure you get down here. Seriously. Uh, those boys really are going to blow the roof off and if you can imagine what they sound like when they're playing live at Leeds they're going to make the same exact sound here it's going to be as loud and uh, yeah you're going to be blown away by it um, so before that on the Thursday uh, we have Dev Ceremony um, in support of their most recent release um, so that will be with Spy Cranes and John Mills and on the Saturday uh, Rock and Your Ball will be here with the Franklies, Thumbscrew and Fickle Barbers, Salvation Jane, Foxy Perlesque, sounds good, uh, Gothy Carney Wink, and uh, Smashing Monroe. Oh man, this is gonna be really good. I'm well up for that. I'm, well, I'm gonna be there for that. When's that? Saturday. I'm in, I'm in, I'm doing it. Great, okay, well, you need to be there too. You need to be there for all of those shows. Uh, seriously though, do come down, uh, do come and check us out over the Christmas period. We've got more shows to be released coming up. Uh, plenty of things taking us into the new year. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube, also on Facebook and Twitter. Give us some comments, let us know what you wanna see. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Cheers. No check? No?